And welcome to Two Steps Ahead Podcast. I'm Son Edom alongside Tara Hoke Shiro. Glad to have you along. Hey guys, welcome back. Hey, um, would you consider yourself a cougar? A cougar? <laughs> um, no, no, but I have been called... A MILF? A MILF. Have you? I have. Ooh, do tell. By who? How young? Um, high school kids. Really? How does that make you feel? Um, awful. Why? <laughs> they, they say they say they say the only the only bad publicity is no publicity. Is no publicity. <laughs> so I'm having not, having I, a young buck, not saying you're going to act on it, unless he was maybe 18, and even then I think you have to wait till he's out of high school nowadays. I don't know the law, but having somebody uh, find you attractive, no matter what the age, does that make you feel good? Like pump up your chest a little bit. Um. Yes and no. I mean, I can understand that being yeah. younger, yes no. that it's like, man, nah, it's probably not the, remember we talked about before, the unwanted versus wanted attention. So that's probably unwanted attention from like a high school kid. So my ki- my kids were in high school at the time. Right. So. It's probably like a friend. So it was, un, you know. Unwanted. It was unwanted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah was but just having unwanted. the attention or having somebody think of you as attractive. Actually, I'm going to interrupt you because I just remember the other part of the story so the reason why i Juicy heard that details. yeah was another mom another mom told another you? mom came up and she thought it was cool and i'm like what are you saying now was the other mom hot uh or was she jealous no mm-hmm. i not no Mm-mm. so maybe she was envious because you had so how'd she find out i don't know. Was it her kid? I maybe. Possibly really? her kid or wow. someone told her kid who told her. I'm not really sure how she heard it or found out. So but she mom. this mom up yeah, on campus no less, walked up to me and said, Hey, this group over here is calling you a MILF. And 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 I actually had to say, What does that mean? Because at the time I didn't know what it even meant. Did, did you ask so, her that? Yeah. And what she replied, did she actually tell you what it meant? She did. And then she wow. was like, Aren't you flattered? And I was like, No. It was just, wow. it was just like. See, perspective, because creepy. obviously the woman telling you yes. would have loved that to have that attention. Maybe. Because she's like, aren't you flattered? Maybe that's, yeah, maybe that's why and she had that reaction. And then you're like, mm, that's kind of reaction. bizarre. But maybe now, okay, what if it was now, but now that you know what it means and the whole, uh, not stigma that comes with it, but the whole aura that comes mm-hmm. with it. Mm-hmm. If someone came to you and said, hey, do you know these people were calling you this? How would that make you feel? I now okay, I would now, probably now, say thank you and move, move on. on. Okay, because yeah, now now your kids are in college, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. that was high school. So now they're in college. So what their college buddies come mm-hmm. coming around? You know, I do not know what they think. I hmm. I have I don't even want to know. Now, would that make it <laughs> awkward to have them around? I know they think I'm attractive right. because they my kids get a lot of comments. And they will, my friends say, oh yeah, my friends think that you're so pretty, but it doesn't like go, it's just, I don't Do you know. have any of them follow you on social media? East girls. Um, actually there's a couple guys. Really? Recently that, yeah. But recently? I don't, yeah, but I don't have. No, I'm, yeah, I'm talking about the friends mm-hmm. that have followed you recently. Um, yeah, Gr- mostly girls. Mostly girls, but yeah, there are a couple of the male friends that follow me on Instagram. So what do you think their purpose is in following you? I think they think I'm cool mm. because, <laughs> because we have a, like I know them, it. they've been at the house, I've been to their house, we all have a great time together. No, and, no Mrs. Robinson syndrome? No. Hmm. no, I don't think so, no. Really? No, I don't think so. Now, if you found that out. Would you still want them to come around or would that change the dynamic? That would change the dynamic and that would, no, I would not want them to come around. So ignorance would be bliss just not to know uh, how they're thinking about you. Yes. Why are you asking me wow. all these questions? You're making well, I could me take it nervous. Further down, I could take it further down the You're gutter. making me nervous. In a classy way if we okay. wanted to. Okay. But what if, uh, what if somebody actually came and one of them actually came and hit on you? Um, that would be a deal breaker. That would. Okay. Yeah. What if. 
okay, what if a strange guy, because we've talked about this before too, Mm -hmm. you talked about the airport story where a guy was checking you out and your kid was like trying to block his view. Right. Okay. Now you don't have that, you don't have that protector there anymore. (laughs) Thor is not there anymore with his hammer ready to go cracking the guy's skull looking at you funny. But uh, what if somebody comes up to you and like starts talking to you and pays you a compliment, maybe asks you out. Maybe he throws down the, uh, he's a younger guy, so you obviously know that kind of cougarish mentality might be there with him. Mm-hmm. How would that make you feel? I'm not talking about whether or not you'd act on it, because well, I, I think we know that. Yeah, we know but that I would just how would but, it make you feel yeah. to know that there's a, a younger admirer pursuing you in the realm of the fact that you are a cougar, you are older, and he's just a little cubby. So and he's not doesn't play for Chicago. So, so of course, there's a side of me. I think there's a side of all of us that loves the attention, that loves the validation. That's like, yeah, because I'm older. So you know, if if that were to happen, then it would be like, yeah, okay, I still got it. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't um, push me into an area where I think that I'm better than or validate me in any kind of a different way. I've kind of turned that side of me off. So when it happens, um, I kind of, I acknowledge it, but I don't go around glowing all day like I used to. Like the, before you I would- used to. I used to. I used to be like-, like How many years ago did you used to? Yeah, um, last Yesterday. year. No, okay, yeah. <laughs> Yesterday? <laughs> Yesterday? I've changed today. Because it happens so much, I'm immune exactly. to it now. Exactly. Exactly. No, like, you know, a couple, five, ten years ago, I would have glowed- uh, for probably a week and and been like, oh, you know, but I don't get my self-esteem from that anymore. It still happens, but I don't, you know, sometimes when I'm out walking or running, people will honk at me or, you know, that's whatever. So I, I don't, and I don't, people will look at me in the grocery store. I don't think twice about it anymore. I don't take it in. I don't take it in. So if people are talking bad about me, I don't take it in. If people are talking good about me, I don't take it in. I hear it, I acknowledge it, and then I let it go. So now what if somebody in the grocery store was approaching you with an up down, upside down pineapple <laughs> jingling his keys and he's maybe like 22, 23? Well, I think technically to be a swinger, again, you well, have to be married, right? Isn't I, that the part? The whole know. point of a swinger I is that no you're idea. married? Is it? So, but, yeah. but, okay, so maybe, maybe so he is. the upside down pineapple or so, the keys on the table yeah, so, would be from an older... Well, it doesn't have to be. He could be a young married guy looking to... Could be. Looking to... Uh, could be. Maybe he's a young married guy looking for someone to uh, show him some experience so Maybe. that way he can then go in and, um, and use that education <laughs> to uh, pleasure his <laughs> wife. Yeah, that's just gross. Teacher that's Mrs. Robinson. Just, yeah, no, that's just... Educator. Way... Okay, would you rather have the label of a cougar milf, which usually has a connotation of hotness to it, mm-hmm. or like um, the crazy cat lady... That's like in curlers with blue hair, running around in a muumuu, chasing the neighborhood kids around. Is there something in the middle? Something in between <laughs> milk and cat lady? <laughs> Malcolm's in the middle. Um, I don't know. Maybe ma'am. Everything's yes, ma'am. Yeah. Because of uh, there's a respect of a of an older person that is. Um, although, do they do that anymore? Mm-hmm. Do I do. I the, say uh, yes, you know, ma'am, yes, yeah. sir, all the time, even when people are younger than. <clears throat> but the point is me. The whole labeling thing. Okay, so you uh, so the 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 would you just rather just have someone come up to you and be like, hey, you look very nice today, and then move on without all that labeling going on? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, it, the labeling makes me uncomfortable because then so it the puts attention. A, yeah. So the attention. Mm-hmm isn't necessarily the thing that's uncomfortable because that just comes with the territory territory get it territory <laughs> yes the territory <laughs> versus the labeling which adds an extra connotation to something that's like sex related right. sex filled right uh, a desire to be with mm-hmm. because i think it's okay mm-hmm. for people to be a, i don't say attracted but to to recognize the beauty in others without having an attraction there Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. So, for example, I could come up to you and be like, hey, you look very nice today. You look very beautiful today. Mm-hmm. And you can be like, oh, thank you. And then that's it. Right. Versus the, hey, you're very hot. I think you're a cougar. Mm-hmm. Let's get it on. Exactly. There's a, two different connotations. Exactly. And, and the word or the label, so to speak, mm-hmm. is what kind of defines the intent. Mm-hmm. That's true. And so if that you label true. the intent of, you know, hey, I want to have sex with this person because she's older and I guess, you know good looking I, got, I don't know maybe good looking could be uh, 
could be uh, maybe it's just age. I don't know. Maybe somebody just wants to be with someone older. Mm-hmm. But again, you're dealing with something that you're that you're labeling a situation or labeling somebody because of the, of who they are, and then wanting in this case to act upon it through a uh, a right. lustful desire. And they have and and in that label, they're putting on that person. You know, their definition of cougar. They're mm-hmm. putting on that woman. Or on or the mill for you know whatever they've got obviously some sort of fantasy going on in their head that okay that yeah so then when they put that label on me it doesn't feel good okay so now you uh, you're you're in the workforce you work at a company mm-hmm. that is mainly male dominated as mm-hmm. far as the workers that are there mm-hmm. but you're a woman so are you a woman working there or are you a coworker? How do people see you there? And how does that make you feel? Uh, I would say both. So you're just one of the guys? No. No? No. No, I would say both. Would you just want to be one of the guys? Um, or would you rather be, no, be because seen somebody, as... No, because somebody said the other day, we were we were sitting in a, in a conference room not too long ago, and it was a lunch type situation, and one of the guys, it was all, there were um, probably... 12 guys in the room and two of us ladies. And so one of the guys said he threw the F-bomb and I cannot remember why. I don't remember the context that he used it. Um, I truly don't remember at this moment, but it was in a way that I, so I spoke up and I I laughed and I said, uh, language. And then he looked at me and he said, oh, I'm an equal opportunity um swear i think is what he said or something like that and so he so in his eyes he was paying respect to us because we were he was treating us you know as one of the guys and i said um well maybe you should like put a filter on it like he he was trying to say like no no you're you're one of us and i'm like "Uh, that's you know lot language that's shop language that's not Mm. you know it's not office language it's not something that um it was just in the workplace and the way that it was used, it was inappropriate. And I called him out on it because there were women in the room. There were two of us and he didn't think that there was anything wrong with it. But I felt uncomfortable um, letting that go. The next time someone calls you a MILF, yes. you should respond, yeah, man, I like football. <laughs> <laughs> and then he'll just be like what the just happened yeah and he'll be like and then he'll go away or just ask him for money and he'll go away oh thank you can I borrow 20 bucks 50 bucks and then he'll go away now they've never said that to my face this was something that yeah, I heard third part like yeah. the mom came around and said well, if hey, it ever does, do you know what they're saying about you <laughs> if it ever does then if you it know. ever does if it ever does there you go yeah I love football okay so what about then in other instances where you've got people that kind of put others in a category, they put them in a box, they label them as, you know, okay, how about blondes? Blondes for years always were either A, they had more fun, mm-hmm. or B, they were ditzy, mm-hmm. one or the other. Which is why I dye my hair brown. Right, and so no, I was going to ask you, <laughs> in your day, were you the ditzy or were you the more fun? I was the ditzy, more fun brunette. <laughs> no, but so the whole idea of putting people, yes. you know, labeling them, putting them in a box, categorizing them, mm-hmm. and you could take this. I mean, we're we're obviously talking more on the uh, the fun side of it, but mm-hmm. it does get serious. I mean, you got people that are out there mm-hmm. that are labeling others, putting them in a box. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the things that I find most fascinating, for example, and I don't want to bring up politics at all, but obviously the political nature of immigration in this country. Mm-hmm. And they always put these immigrants in a box as if they can only do something. For example, mm-hmm. we need to have these people come here because we need you know, workers in the field. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? You think that that's the only thing they could do? What about mm-hmm. the doctors, the lawyers, the mm-hmm. businessmen, the other people that are highly educated that just want to come here because they can't in their own country right. and they want a better place to, to you know, do business? Or what about you know, others that have come from maybe other places or, or even in the education world? I mean, I've seen it where a lot of people think that you know, Asian uh, people, Asian students are more smart 
in math Mm -hmm. and science. Mm -hmm. And then you have others that are more like, okay, then you're going to think that, you know, black athletes are going to be more athletic, Mm -hmm. you know? And so then you start labeling students and these people and putting them in those categories Mm -hmm. based Mm -hmm. on just what they look like and Mm -hmm. and maybe the stereotypes that they have. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, you know, like I said, blondes are ditzier and not as smart or, you know, um, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And so you're starting to put these people in the, in these positions and these, and, and then, and then how does that affect the people that are being put Right. Or tagged with those labels. Right. Yeah, I had a big conversation about this yesterday with um, somebody. And I like that you that you said earlier that if you give someone a, a woman a compliment and she just looks nice, that's one thing. But if you approach and say something, you know, use a label like a cougar or a milf, then now you're you're changing the direction completely. And I think labels, on one hand, they have a purpose because our whole language is built on labels. If we were going to put sticky notes around the room, we would label this a table and that the wall and that the light and the camera and so on. So we have to have words that we can use to describe the way that we are living. However, when we use those labels to put people down or to put them in a box, as you say, and to, so that they are less than or less than us or less capable of something or not worthy of services or um, then now we're in trouble. Now we're using the labels to be in a, in a derogatory fashion. And, um, you know, in the human rights, you talk about the immigration. There are places in the world where the immigrants are um, they are protected or not protected under these different treaties of the, you know, from the different countries and depending on what their label is depends on what kind of services they get and there are some um, refugees that are not getting services at all because they don't fall into any of the categories that are that are protected by you know certain countries and so there are labels that that we can have fun with you know like cougar and milf but then there's there's times when we label people that has very serious consequences on our human rights and our very existence of being a human and so what do we do with these labels like like you know it's good on one hand you know a label we can go in the library or in the bookstore and we can find information or on the internet based on the label that we're using or we can use the label to demean people and degrade them yeah so for example why is it that if a woman chooses to sleep around she's a slut Mm -hmm. but if a dude decides to sleep around he's a stud Uh, he's a player (laughs) or a player i guess player now i got gotta keep up with the kardashians here so he's a player so why isn't the woman a player Uh, yeah but it's just it's not why isn't the dude a slut I think he is. And, you know, and, so but, again, you've got the yeah. same. It's just more acceptable. The same um, activity or behavior going on. It's just gender determines whether it's a, a positive behavior or potentially a negative behavior. Yeah. You know what? And this is a little, not, um, this is a little uh, TMI, Sad. I guess. I know, but, but if we're going to be real and talk about the shit, then I guess that's how I have to go. Yes. Right? So you're the slut. <laughs> No, oh. that's not where I was going oh. with this. Sorry. But I was going to say My where bad. that comes from because with the guys, you know, when they when they sleep around, it's it's kind of ex- expected or it's kind of like right. it's normal. It's like you know whatever. That's just the way guys are, and for women, it's not ex- you know not acceptable. You know, and I think I don't know if I were to guess that guys' physical bodies like. You know, the tanks get full, they need to be emptied. That's really a horrible way of saying that. Women don't have that. So we could use that as an excuse. I'm not, I don't think that that's a valid reason, but I think that might be where it comes from that guys have this idea that they have to, you know, lighten the load every now and then. I don't think that that's a worthy. But it still doesn't, um, doesn't, doesn't, if you take, if you take two people, one male, one female, and they're both having sex with multiple people. That still doesn't. Um, and where are we going with the labels on this? Well, no, because that's it. The, the the female is labeled as a slut. The girl is a slut, which is a negative connotation. Yeah. And the guy is, like you said, a player or a stud or whatever. It's a positive thing. So the, you're labeling the behavior. It's positive depending on who you're talking well, that, to. You're just, but you're labeling yeah, people based on gender as to whether society thinks it's a good thing or a bad thing. When the behavior is the exact same thing. Just like if you're an older person then you have to be an attractive you're going to be labeled okay let's let's take it out of that bedroom well uh, the bedroom realm how about academics okay so <clears throat> it started out as you were uh, mentally handicapped 
Okay, that was the tag. Mm -hmm. Then it was, okay, now you have a developmental disability. Mm -hmm. Then it was, you have a learning disability. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so now we're starting to like just create a label on people Mm -hmm. who obviously have something that's a little different than what maybe your average student Mm -hmm. would have, you know, a general ed population student would have. But you've labeled them, but now all we're doing is we're just trying to uh, desensify or, or make it more politically correct the label that we attach to them. Yeah, you know, I started off my book that way. No arms, no legs, no problem when I wrote that book. The very first page in that. Great Christmas gift, by the way. Yes, very great Christmas gift. Uh, It's available on Amazon. (laughs) Um, But the very first page in that says, you know, first they called me um, handicapped. Then it was physically challenged. Then it was disabled. And he says, you know, I've all to me, I've always just been Bob. Because and 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 he said when I'm in my apartment and he's completely he doesn't have you know his arms are down to his elbow and he doesn't have legs and so he's completely self sufficient but he says when he's in his apartment he's just Bob he's just him but the minute he walks out his door now he's disabled now he's whatever current word society is is putting on him or current label and and it's it's hard for him to live under that. He is able to do just about anything that he wants to do. Um, he moves about the planet and plays sports and has a job and is married and all kinds of stuff. But, but society sees him as disabled. And so he has to constantly prove what he is able to do on a daily basis. So the labels on one hand are a way that we make meaning and categorize things, but it's just, it's also detrimental because when we place a label on somebody, now we're putting them in this area that um, that we're not allowing them to to be humans and to be people. Yeah, and that's when you when you talk about that, we also can start to get onto a a slope, so to speak, of a slippery slope where we tend to continue to I don't want to say degrade them, but make them less mm-hmm. meaningful. Yes. So yes. <clears throat> Again, the, the, I was I always get caught off guard because I can't keep up with the PC culture mm-hmm. that goes on. Because I just I just don't. I mean, it's not that I don't care about it. I just try to treat everybody as an individual. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have some students that are under the um, uh, special education, uh, which is now something else. Mm-hmm. But for this conversation, we'll just call them. They've got a learning disability, and so they come with that uh, credentialing, you know, paperwork. Right. Okay, right. so obviously I have to purposefully. Uh, try to educate them based on what their abilities are. Right. Then I have other students that come in and they're 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 just regular general ed students, but their abilities to learn vary from person to person based mm-hmm. on who they are. Some are more visual, some are more uh, uh, hands on, kinesthetic. You know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so you have to kind of figure out which each person does and what the best way to to educate them, and then. Um, Go accordingly. Right. Now, I don't put labels on them. They're just all students. It doesn't matter if they're a DSPS, that's the department, mm-hmm. or if they're just general ed. Mm-hmm. They're a student's a student, and I'm just going to adjust accordingly depending on their abilities. Right. Okay. But again, and I understand we sometimes have to have labels, I guess, if you want to call them that, or some sort of designation, because it is true some people just can't. For example, Bob, he can't be on the football team. Or he can't be on a basketball team or some other sporting event without accommodations to fit what his lifestyle is. Right. So is it a disability, I guess, or is it just a change of uh, circumstances for him to be able to engage in these things? Like you mentioned before, Mm -hmm. he can play rugby Mm -hmm. and he can play the basketball and Mm -hmm. he's in his wheelchair, which I guess now is even wheeled mobility because we have to take the wheelchair stigma away. Right. And and then all of a sudden we're like creating these things things and so for bob which i think is ironic that you say that because we're taking away one label and giving it another Thank so you. what yeah. is the <laughs> that's the, that was the whole what point did of we, it. where did we get how far did we did we move the well, needle we, we and taking away one and, yeah we and don't because we're always all we're doing is changing the label changing so the that label people like us feel better feel better about dealing about with the, the bobs label. of the yeah. world because yeah. how many times do you see somebody that's a little different maybe they're in a wheelchair or maybe they've lost a limb or maybe they're just different maybe they've been uh disfigured in some mm-hmm. way and we turn and run from them right you know i remember one time i met uh, nick vujicic he was the a gentleman that was born without arms and legs very mm-hmm. popular speaker mm-hmm. in the uh, around the globe and he's an inspirational speaker again no arms no legs uh, much like bob but he was mm-hmm. born this way right i remember the first time i met him i was kind of taken aback 
only from the standpoint of what do you do because you can't shake his hand. Mm -hmm. You can't do anything. Right. He's just, you know, his, his body He's frame. just a core. Yeah, he's, he's just absolutely his core. absolutely a core. He has and no, it's just his shoulders. And, and I wasn't sure, do yeah. I hug him? Because is that invading his personal space? Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I just didn't know. And so I asked him about it. I said, what's the best best way to, you know, greet you? Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, I take hugs. Okay, oh. so then you give him a hug. So right. I had to ask him, and I, but I didn't want to, but I was, I guess, uh, okay enough or mature enough or mm -hmm. professional enough to ask, hey, how do I greet you? Because... I don't want to invade your space, right, but I also right. don't want to be like, hey, you know, you can't greet. And so he would do hugs. So mm -hmm. I gave him a hug. But that's the type of thing. It's like there's still people, no matter who you are. I mean, it could be you being the MILF or me just being some old dude. You know, we're just still people. But yet when we start putting these labels on them and we start changing the labels just mm -hmm. so that that way we can feel good about ourselves by how we call these people that are different from us. Mm -hmm. That, that's all we're doing is just trying to make it comfortable for us and we're not doing anything because Bob like you said is Bob in his house once he leaves the threshold of his home now he is something less than Bob according to society according, right and but but we also have to I guess bring into the argument that labels um, are attached to benefits they're attached to special services they are attached to um, you know different you know financial streams of income so we can't let go of the labels because there are, you know, a disabled, the people in the disabled community um, get services, you know, for college, for tuition, for housing, for there's a lot of the foster kids, right? They get services from the government. Um, and the only way that they get those services is if they're labeled, you know, a foster kid. Um, so we need labels to to help people but then they are also a detriment because of you know we kind of have a we have a tendency to devalue them at the same time so that's the downside i suppose is that i don't know that we could ever get rid of the labels because then you know how do you how do you help or how do you um because bob fights for he goes around and speaks and he fights for services for the disabled. He fights for in communities to make sure that the sidewalks are accessible with wheelchairs and with um, prosthetic limbs. He fights for um, public services like airplanes and buses and um, all kinds of, of sur community services. There's a lot of communities that are not, um, they're just not, the disabled just don't have a lot of, they don't have a gym. Right, we take that for granted. All the gyms are for able-bodied people, but they don't have special ad adaptations um, for people in wheelchairs. So he goes around and fights for all that. So if we didn't have the disabled label, then you know we wouldn't get those services. So it's a double-edged sword. No, I agree. We need the designation. Yes. Without the label. Yes. We don't because again. But what's the difference between a designation okay, and well, a the, label? Well, maybe we can throw in a military example. I don't know if this is going to be good, so I'm just thinking off the top of my head right now. You have someone who enters the military, they're uh, whatever they are, enlistee, then you move up the rank, private, corporal, whatever. So you have these designa this designation mm -hmm. that specifies what this soldier is. Mm -hmm. But yet, they're not, and, and with that comes privileges, et cetera. But they're not anything less of a soldier based on their rank. Mm -hmm. So you obviously have somebody like Bob who is uh, disabled. He cannot be, uh, he cannot uh, climb stairs, you know, like we do. So, you know, with him in a wheelchair, he might need an elevator or he might, oh, he might not be able to get through a doorway without it being widened because he needs his wheeled mobility to get through. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, I know he can, you know, function, but I'm just saying in these abilities, getting up on a sidewalk, you know, obviously all the street corners have these ramps mm -hmm. because of the uh, American with Disabilities uh, acts that have come throughout, you know, mm -hmm. the, not the, the all time. communities, but most of yeah. them. Yeah. So again, you have to have certain designations that are going to accommodate the, the people that can't do what an abled body to use a label, mm -hmm. uh, person can do. So you need that. But again, when you look at the person, because I would imagine, and I don't know if you had the opportunity, but um, Johnny Erickson Tata, mm -hmm. you know, be able to talk to her. Mm -hmm. And she was a gal who at the age of 19 dove into, I believe it was a lake maybe? 17. The 17, and fractured her uh, neck and mm -hmm. was paralyzed from the neck down, yep. quadriplegic. And she tells her story about a lifetime living in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Now, has it been great? No. 
Did she wish it could change? Absolutely. But she doesn't view herself any less of a person. And oftentimes, she will even say that because of her accident and her disability, she's been go- she has been able to go on and do greater things than she might have even done if she was an able-bodied person. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we can take... So the point is, we label her disability as a, as a disabled person, but the stuff she has done has probably been far more than a lot of able-bodied people mm-hmm. have been able to do. Mm-hmm. And it's almost like if you have a disability, you rise up more. And I've seen students with, uh, with the, the, the learning disabilities rise up more and overcome more obstacles and achieve more because of their disability than people who are able body it yeah it depends on the person there's a another um guy that was that played quad rugby with bob his name is mark zupan and he has a book called gimp um it's a fabulous book and he describes that when he was first injured now he actually bob has amputations but mark zupan actually has a spinal injury and he's a quadriplegic he's a functioning quadriplegic meaning that um he can drive and play quad rugby and and get around in life but um, he describes when he got drunk one night, he and his buddy were at a bar and he got drunk and he went out into his buddy's um, pickup truck and fell asleep in the back of the bed of the truck. His buddy was also drunk, didn't know that he was uh, back there. So he came out a little bit later to get in the car and drive home. He thought he was by himself in the truck and it had started to rain. Um, his buddy uh, lost control of the car because he was drunk and it was raining. And so the, the truck um, hit something, spun around and crashed uh, into a tree or whatever. And so the police came and um, got the truck and got the buddy. You know, he the buddy, you know, survived the accident. The driver, they didn't know that, that Mark was even in the back of the truck, had no idea. And so when the truck hit, whatever it hit and spun around mark because he was laying in the bed of the truck flew out and flew down into a creek and so and he hit his um he broke his neck he was a quadriplegic and so he was hanging on to a branch or caught on a branch i should say because he was a quad so he couldn't hang on so um uh his face was just barely out of the water and i think he was um in the water for I want to say 24 hours or thir- like long time before they found him because the next day, the you know, everybody woke up from the drunken party and, you know, like, well, where's Mark? Well, I don't know. Did you see him? Did you see him? And they didn't even realize that he was missing. And then they start search for him. Then they, you know, by the time they put two and two together, it had been almost 24 hours, I think, that he was in this creek. And so then they, you know, it turns out he, the accident Um, turned him into a quadriplegic so anyway he tells the story in his book about that transition between able body he was a um, soccer player that was phenomenal the difference between um, going from able body to a disabled person and there's a transition time that they have to get over and some people rise to the occasion like you're saying and some people don't some people um, live as you know hermits and and they just stay in their house and they don't have a lot of family support other people and he said it took about two years and he he talks about you know wandering around his wheeling around his house feeling sorry for himself you know poor me what was me and it took him a couple of years to get out of that to get he's an engineer so he, had, he got you know back into society got back into sports into quad rugby um, so it, it's some people do some people rise above but again it's this label that now you are disabled and and which is why I think sometimes we change the labels even though we're still labeling them because they're they feel derogatory they feel put upon they feel oppressive and it's like you are less than dis disabled it's a it's less than it's less than abled so it does feel very um oppressive in a lot of ways and and we don't fit in with the rest of the society and so in that sense you know the label is um, very defeating you know when you wake up and you're disabled you're like okay i'm at a disadvantage i can't keep up with you know the rest of society i can't do and it takes a strong mind to say no i can't maybe walk on the beach i can't even roll on the beach unless i have one of those fancy wheelchairs but i can do this and this and this and this i can still work i can still play sports i can still have relationships and get married and so you have to some people will rise above that and and you know and take it on and some people sink you know it just depends on the mindset depends on the support group that they have it depends on the family that they have um but the label certainly has a lot to to do, you know, 
with it doesn't it doesn't feel good and i will say even you know to take it i don't know if you've had labels put upon you for any any reason or any time in your life i know as a christian that label to me even though i love god love jesus but i cringe when if if anybody asks me if i'm a christian not because i'm embarrassed to um say you know that i have a relationship with jesus but that word christian has such a negative connotation right now. I hate that label because when it's on, when they talk about it on TV or in the media, it's always in a derogatory manner, always. There's never a positive example. And I shouldn't say never, most of the time. There's not there, a positive there is, example. Yeah, no, there are some positive are, examples yeah. out there. But no, I understand that. As far as being labeled, maybe, I don't know. But again, it goes back to, I'm not really concerned what other people think about me. I'm more concerned about what I'm doing for other people. So Mm -hmm. I'd rather just have that kind of like the, and I'm kind of like the type of person that if I'm going to do something, I'd rather not have the accolades for it. Right. uh, Because I just, that's just not how I'm, I'm, I operate. And so for me, I kind of will, if I've had negative labels put on me, I a am unaware because I just don't care and don't remember or B I've just been fortunate enough not to have that happen. But here's the other thing too, when you think about it. Okay. We've also moved into a, a generational time where before there used to be, Man, <laughs> woman. Right. Then man, woman became slut stud. <laughs> and then slut stud became milf and I guess old pervy dude. I don't know. Old pervy dude, yeah. But so now we're in a situation in society where we've got more than man and woman. I think there is something like 58-ish lab- gender categories, choices on Facebook. Yeah, see, there's a, a game that I like to play. Back in the old days of radio, you used to have a game called Battle of the Sexes. Mm-hmm. So you have a male and female uh, contestant, mm-hmm. male and female contestant. So you would ask the male contestant questions that the female or the lady mm-hmm. would know. Mm-hmm. It might be, again, not stereotyping, but it might be makeup related. It might be fashion related. It might be, you know, that type of stuff. Celebrity mm-hmm. gossip, you know. Soap opera, I don't know. But then you would ask the guy, uh, or you, then you'd ask the lady, guys related questions. How do you change an oil? You know, how you change the oil, stuff like that. I'm not saying that's, that's just how it is. That's just a game. If you don't like it, don't listen. But now I changed it. So now I've changed it. When I, when I play it with my students, I've mixed it up a little bit because it's, it's first off, it's curious because now nobody knows nothing. You can ask a guy, mm. guy questions, he won't know it. Mm. You can ask a lady, or, you know, a female student, the female questions, they won't know it. Sure. So it's everybody's, ignorant but i've changed the name to the battle of the non-binary no no to the gender i still have to remember it's so confusing it's the gender neutral non-binary biological entities oh my gosh it's the battle of the gender neutral (laughs) non-binary biological entities okay because it's gotten to the point where we're just so wacky that you have all these things that i don't even know what they are anymore what the categorizations are. And now it's gotten to the point too where you have to, I see people put on their email the pronouns that you wish to be referred to. Mm-hmm. And so one of these days, I'm going to really like screw with somebody. So how does it say that? I've never seen an okay, email so like have that. A, so it'll have a name. So let's just say, say it'll, have, it'll have my name. Okay. Okay, Sonny them. Okay. Then it might have my signature. Okay. Which would be a sign, which again, I have no time to do this. Right. Then it would have my uh, position. Mm-hmm. Okay, associate professor mm-hmm. passing the city college mm-hmm. goes by pronouns or, or preferred pronouns, uh, and then it would be like um, whatever. Yeah. So my if That's I would did this, I would put line. like it, <laughs> Zen. <laughs> Uh, I just make stuff up. But that's the thing. So then you look and you can see now based on the email signature of what they would like to be, which mm-hmm. is funny in a way, mm-hmm. because I've yet, in all my time of seeing this, mm-hmm. I've yet to see anybody come up with something other than the correct, if I might say that, gender pronouns that they are. He, she. He, she mm-hmm. type of thing. Mm-hmm. You know, they, us. But I'd like to come up with some like, you know, some widget type ones where you just like make some make some up and see if people actually call me that. Because <laughs> I don't even think anybody pays attention to it on the flip side. Right. And and I know that there that question doesn't, um, people don't like that question. Because again, you're dealing with a label. Right. And so it's like, what do you... What do you prefer? What do you like to go by? Or, you know, people don't, if, if there's, if it's, there's someone that it's hard to tell, 
then they do not like to be asked, are you male or female? Um, I don't know all the protocols. I'm still learning, but. Because right, you could walk up to somebody that could be looking, look either male or female. Right. They could have a gender neutral name like Chris mm-hmm. or Jackie. Right. And you just don't know. And there you're was just kind of like, hmm. Yeah. And you're not sure. And so we if we are uncomfortable with that. I Right. The, the, we're, we're uncomfortable because we don't know the the category the label the designation that they are and it makes us very uncomfortable and so we want that um, we want to know I guess who who we're talking to and I saw an example of this um, on the voice not too long ago and forgive me again my recall memory is horrible so if you listen to this podcast for very many episodes you're gonna figure me out right quick I would not be a good contestant on uh, oh shoot what's the name of the uh, family feud or any type of recall quick recall I can think of it later in the car. Anyway, I digress. Don't call me at 2 a.m. thinking, hey, I finally remembered what what, what I was going to say. I'm horrible at 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 names and and, uh, band names and songs. And you're like, what's that? Okay, yeah, I'm horrible. So there's this person on The Voice a few um, weeks ago. And I didn't know. I didn't care, honestly. But I didn't know if, if this singer was a boy or a girl. Could could have been either, so, but I didn't. This phenomenal singer, but I I didn't really. It wasn't bugging me, but I was curious. I was like, okay, um, well, apparently I didn't go on Twitter. I didn't go on and, and look at the conversation, but apparently there was one because several episodes I- into this particular into this season, several episodes in, all of the sudden, they the um, host started addressing this contestant as. He. So I and as soon as I heard that, I was like, "Ooh, people have been asking. People are wanting to know because they made a very specific point to keep saying he, him, he, him during, and they've never addressed. What would him. they call him before? That nothing because who cares what the singer? They're just there to sing. So they they were calling him by his name. What was the name? And so it was a it was a, a gen- like a Chris. Yeah, okay. It was a generic. It could have you know gone either way. So all the contestants on the on the on the voice or those shows are called you know by their name but my guess what and i didn't go back to look it up because i don't like to get into the gossip and to the the people online are just mean so i try to stay away from it but i surmised from that show because um he was the only one that was it because he had been on several episodes and they'd never addressed him that way before didn't address anybody else that way, but all of a sudden on this one particular episode, they were making a point of saying he or him. Do you think that's because he wanted it to be known that he was a he? Like who would make that designation if it wasn't for the contestant himself? I have a feeling, like I said, I did not go on Twitter and find out because I get sucked into people's idiocy. And so I don't, I don't like to do that. I sometimes I do, but this particular time I didn't. So, but I, my guess was, is that people were asking you know, because you're voting and you're, you know, you're, you know, liking, you know, the the contestants. And I had to, I just, I'm just like, okay, people must have been asking because why is the show, why is the host all of the sudden out of the blue addressing this person as as he? And when he said that, I was like, oh, he's a boy. No, why did it matter? It shouldn't. It should be me? irrelevant. It shouldn't. But, but do you ever feel like when you're talking the- to someone that you're just not, sure like i, I kind of wanted there's, there's been times where i've talked to people and i don't know their gender in fact i had a student not too long ago that i wasn't sure what the gender was and the name was gender neutral i'm not gonna mm-hmm. no, reveal no, no, don't that say it. yeah <laughs> but um but i wasn't sure but i always approached this person as a person right it didn't matter to me what their gender was. The only concern I had was I did not want to misaddress them. Mm -hmm. And so I would always just refer to them by name, Mm -hmm. which sometimes can be funny when you're dealing with, you know, because sometimes a pronoun, hey, uh, you know, hey, can you join her? And can you join him and team up? You know, sometimes a pronoun just kind of is natural. And we start throwing out names all the time. It's like, is this guy nuts? You know? Right. So it was got to be a little humorous at times, but I just addressed them as the person because that's who they are as a person. So in this case, the singer, it's, you know, irrelevant if they're male or female. The only fact is that they can sing or not sing. Right. And I don't care. Like you said, I don't care which 
I don't I don't I don't need to have the answer, but there is a side of of me, and I guess there is a side of when I. I mean, is that what I mean? See, I, I, I kind of want to know. Like, yeah, people want to deal. I think it's human nature for people to deal in absolutes. You want to know. And sometimes you just can't know. Right. You want to know why something happened. We've talked about in the past, you know, a friend dies. Why? Um, a person is male or female. What are they? I want to know. Why? Should, um, you know, should we want to impose our right and wrong on people. We want to influence people because we feel our way is the right way. And that's the one thing I've learned over the years is that, you know, there's not always one right way. There's a way I've been brought up and there's a way I've had to, uh, you know, that I've been raised as far as a thought process. And then there's somebody else that has been raised as a thought process and the way they've been raised. And then you start to realize that there's more than one opinion out there that can be correct. And you start to have to realize and kind of change your thinking to a certain degree. You don't want to be so open-minded that your brain leaks out, but you want to be able to be have a little bit of open-mindedness to realize that there is another way that could possibly be true too. So for example, um, in this case, you want to have the absolute knowledge of is it a he or she, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But what happened to just being able to enjoy the person's singing abilities regardless of their gender? Right. I, I, and I just want to make that clear that I was enjoying that person. I was not one of the ones that, right. I no, didn't, I, get that, I didn't but, write in com- like, like, Hey, is this person a boy or a girl? Like I didn't take it to the level mm-hmm. of don't, you know, getting on social media. I'm assuming that people did, which sure is why did. that happened. But I think it comes down to their absolute but having to absolutely know, know the answer. And sometimes yes, yes. it's okay not to know. Yes, yeah, and that's uncomfortable for us. I mean, I've gotten recently into uh, into a Spanish language music. Okay, why well, listen to Spanish language music? I can't speak Spanish, and so I have some friends that will then begin to translate the song. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, you start to realize that once you translate, obviously from Spanish to English, you can't translate word for word. You start translating no. thoughts, yeah. ideas. Yeah. Okay. Well, once you start to do that, to me, my meaning of the song. Okay, I might have the basic general like okay give me the basic general Mm -hmm. concept of what they're singing about so maybe it's a love song and they're singing about you know how they met or maybe it's uh you know the beauty of the sky or whatever and so but then after that it's like okay don't tell me the rest of it because as you continue to translate it loses the meaning for me. It mm-hmm. loses the beauty. I'd mm-hmm. like the, the song is ruined because in my mind, I'm thinking of it as this way and this is how I interpret. And sometimes I think that that's what we have to do in life. Not always, but sometimes just enjoy the moment and enjoy what it is, even though we don't know what the absolute answer is or the absolute truth is, because sometimes just being in that moment and just enjoying that moment is okay. It is. And I you're I think that we need to get comfortable with that because, you know, like we were talking about in previous episodes about, you know, criticizing and judging and and labeling. It does keep us from enjoying that person. It does keep us from getting to know that person um, as a person. And, you know, another set of labels that that is really hot right now in our society is the mental illness labels. Um, you know, and, and again, it's like you know, I know people who are bipolar and they don't want to be identified because, again, in society, um, that has a, a negative, you know, connotation. People are scared of it. They don't know what that means exactly. And as soon as you hear mental illness, you know, there are people think, oh, my gosh, they're going to go, you know, shoot up a mall or a school or something. And that's um, not the case at all. But, um, you know, the labels are helpful, again, for services, and they're helpful to understand what is going on. But then they're also a detriment, um, you know, to looking at people as less than. Um, but to me, so like, and I've said several times, like, I have ADD, right? And so I had this conversation yesterday, you know, with someone, and he's like, ah, every time you say that, I don't believe you, and you're able to track, and you're able to to listen to everything that I'm saying and repeat back, and you're not um, you know, looking at squirrels out the window when I'm talking to you. And I said, well, I have a different kind of ADD. Like, like it's also adrenaline deficit disorder. So if my adrenaline isn't pumping, I'm not as clear. I'm not as focused. I'm not as quick um, on the draw. I don't, you know, when I'm in a heated situation, my, I'm all of a sudden like, okay, let's go. And I can, you know, think, think, think. But um, if I don't have that adrenaline charge, I'm like, yeah, you know, whatever, flatline. <laughs> There's just not a lot going on. There's no focus. I'm looking at every squirrel, distracted by everything on my phone. I'm not getting things done. So, um, 
it's helpful to, and he said to me the exact question. He's like, I don't understand why we have to label everything. Why can't we just be people? Why can't we just look, talk to each other as people, have the experiences of people? Why do we have to label everything? And I said, well, for me, knowing how I operate, now I can use it to my advantage. If I didn't know what to call it, I don't know. I would think that I, you know, maybe I would think I was lazy or maybe I think I wasn't capable, but now I can say I have ADD. It's like, oh, okay, that's why I do that. But it can also become an excuse. it It can become an excuse for, you know, for people to use that as well. So for me, I use it to navigate myself. Like I know what triggers me to speed up and slow down. Um, so I can use that to my advantage, but, um, without it you know we have to i th- i guess so i don't know i'm meandering we need them for certain purposes but then when it demeans each other and puts us as less than it's not useful yeah. at all i think it's i think it's a, a designation for a specific purpose to make sure that again everybody's on a level playing field mm-hmm. of life mm-hmm. some people have a better advantage in life just based on natural um DNA this, mm-hmm. or natural luck, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. Mm-hmm. I've been fortunate. I haven't been in an accident. So obviously I can maneuver this world a lot better than Bob can. Mm-hmm. Now, have I done more or does that make me more valuable than anybody else? No. Does that make me uh, someone who should look down on somebody else because of their situation is different, whether they uh, have a disability or not? No. It just makes me maybe fortunate and privileged to know that I haven't had that. But then in some cases, we've talked about why well, I've suffered the loss of friends and you haven't experienced that. Mm-hmm. So again, it's just, does that make you any better or me any less? No, it's just, that's our experience. Mm-hmm. So what I've learned over the years is that it comes down to, we just got to treat people as people. Because again, we've talked about it where the outside attracts the eye, but it's the inside that captures the heart. Mm-hmm. And if we realize that everybody has a spirit inside them, okay, regardless of their physical looks. Mm -hmm. They've got a soul inside them. They've got feelings. They've got emotions. They've got all that inside them. And if we reach in for that and try to attract ourselves to that, then I think we would start treating people differently. If I see something- But we have to have a heart. We have to be in touch with our own heart to make that- Yeah, of course. Oh yeah. There's people that will be mean towards somebody who doesn't look as good or somebody who might be disfigured or Mm -hmm. somebody who might be overweight. Mm -hmm. Of course, you're going to have mean people. I mean, that's just, that's people are people. So you're going to have that already. But for me, I'm just speaking for me personally. I like to look at each person as the person. Okay. Give them the benefit of the doubt first. It could be anybody. And I just look on who they are Mm -hmm. and what their character, what their personality, what their spirit is. Mm -hmm. And then I will make a judgment accordingly. And I try to give them the benefit of the doubt because you never know the situation that they're in. But good people, you're going to find are good people. Bad people, you're going to find are bad people. They're out there. But if we start treating people based on how they look, based on their abilities, based on all these different like, you know, false accomplishments, so to speak. Bob can't do something, therefore he must be treated differently because he has no arms, no legs. This person is disfigured, so obviously they can't be a beauty queen. This person has Down syndrome, so therefore they can only do so much. This person uh, has cerebral palsy, so they're only capable of this. And then I start treating them based on their disability. I'm demeaning them, and I'm demeaning who they are because inside their spirit, that's not who they are because they don't see themselves as that. They see themselves right. as Bob inside my room, inside and I my would, home. And I would suggest that it's not just mean people. It's people who have issues in their own spirit that are not resolved. So if you've got anger issues, if you've got fear issues, if you've got prejudice issues, you know, a lot of this stuff is handed down in our families and we don't even realize it. And so it's not necessarily that we're mean, but it's it's that maybe we ourselves don't know how to be vulnerable or that when we see somebody that that is different than us, it causes us to have to reorganize what we've learned, reorganize what we have previously experienced. And that's uncomfortable. And we don't want to um, we don't want to be put out in our own thought process based on what we're seeing or who we're interacting with. That can be a scary thing a lot of times. And it doesn't necessarily mean that we're mean it could mean that we are we've are closed off in a certain way or we are um we've just been you know brought up in a way that is um 
you know, very um, pretense, you know, oriented. There's not a lot going on on the inside of us. And then you just can't relate to other people. You can't you can't have a heart to heart conversation if your own heart isn't well, if it's not healthy. Right. And so um, that's why it's just so important to grow our character and to and to develop ourselves, because we just don't we can't give what we don't have. So if we don't have that love and respect in our heart, you know, for ourselves and for and, you know, for other people, there's no way that we can treat each other in a way that is that is respectful, because a lot of times people look at people and say, oh, now I'm going to have to pay for that or now I'm going to have to accommodate for that. And we don't want to put ourselves out. So it's there's a lot of inward thinking. There's a lot of selfishness. There's a lot of um, insecurity, a lot of fear, a lot of there's a lot of lot of things going on inside of a person and how we relate to other people is a direct relate a direct reflection of who we are on the inside yeah and then sometimes too it's just educating yourself like i had to do with nick hey man how do i greet you yeah um you're not if you're not comfortable on people in a wheelchair ask ask you know uh, and find out get yourself comfortable because sometimes that will change mm-hmm. um, you know addressing people but if you think of people in the terms of people mm-hmm. and that they've got a spirit they've got a soul they've got emotions they've got feelings and just treat them with the respect that you wanted to be treated with it kind of goes back to that you know kindergarten-esque golden rule do unto others as you would have them do unto you (laughs) as juvenile as that might be that's what it really comes down to treat Mm -hmm. people like you want to be treated Mm -hmm. if you want to be treated nice if you want to be treated polite with respect then you've got to treat others that way and basically it just comes down to treating people as people but again like you said it's going to come down to our own heart our own Mm -hmm. character if we are of good heart and good character we're going to be more apt to treat others right if we're yeah. of an evil heart evil character then we're going to tend to treat people uh, in a bad way mm-hmm. and so you got to check ourselves check ourselves to make sure that we are in a position where we can treat people the way that uh, they should be treated mm-hmm. as humans because like you said like if we took this conversation full circle back to the to the milf or to the cougar they people that are labeling other people in that respect are not mean-hearted <laughs> yeah, they just could be ones they that don't want get, something. So, <laughs> well, the ones that get labeled, they might not be getting laid, so they just yeah. get jealous because they're not having sex. No, so so you have to. We use labels in a way for our own benefit. I think a lot of times. But um, but yeah, it comes down to just uh, we need sometimes we need those designations because it helps. But oftentimes those designations can be hurtful. So just make sure that when it comes to whoever you're addressing, that uh, you just treat them as a person. If you don't know, find out. Have a conversation. Be adult about it and find out. Educate yourself. And I think that, uh, you know, like Rodney King said, even though, again, another juvenile type statement, can't we all just get along? There's so much truth to that. Why can't we? Why does there have to be such a division? Why do we have to look at people differently based on what their body is like? Mm-hmm. And knowing that their spirit, their soul, as a person, is just as rich as ours. Right. Last thoughts? Or was that it? Was that the last thought? So would you rather be a cougar or a MILF? Neither. You have to pick. <laughs> no, I'm not you picking. You have to pick one. I'm not picking. I would, I would like to be a lady. A lady. Man, I like football. That's how you respond. <laughs> I'm a MILF. Man, I like football. And you see that. Hey, uh, Two Steps Ahead podcast, YouTube. Search YouTube and subscribe to our channel. All the videos go up there. Uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Two Steps Ahead podcast. Tell a friend. You can also follow me on Instagram at Edom Rocks. And you can follow me on Instagram at Tara Hoke Shiro, T-A-R-A-H-O-K-E-S-C-H-I-R-O. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast on iHeart, Pandora, iTunes, Apple, Spotify, anywhere there's um, podcasts. Make sure you subscribe and follow so you don't miss an episode. And SoundCloud, which is in the link, link in the bio of our podcast. Hey, thanks for listening. Do tell a friend. You guys have a great one. And we'll see you next time here on Two Steps Ahead podcast. Thanks, guys, for joining. We appreciate it.